Hi, good morning, Two Stroke Turbo fans. Coming at you from the home garage. Stella and I just went for a five mile run on a cold Saturday morning. All the leaves are falling. The trees are gorgeous. We've had a, a late summer. I don't want to say Indian summer. It's not PC anymore. But it's been a cool last couple days and it's gray and cloudy. That's enough of the weather report. We're looking in the driveway here and we haven't switched our cars out for winter yet. We still have all the convertibles. But I wanted to show you something. Two things actually. Two neat things. One thing you're going to really like. The other, I don't know if you're going to like it or not. So this is our 1990 one Nissan Figaro. I've been toying with this thing. Yesterday I did a little service work on it. I rotated the tires. Found out that the, I finally diagnosed that the wheel bearing on this side is the one that's howling and I'm actually grateful for that. I was hoping it wasn't the transmission. Stella is searching for rats under our unfinished driveway. We've got some wood and some pallets and it seems like rats have taken up residence there and that drives her crazy. She's a dirty, dirty, sneaky dog. You can see the black, I don't know what she rolled in again, but um, that's enough of the dog. So uh, the winter car is the van, of course, keeps me warm and dry, and it's actually pretty safe uh, with the heat and the wipers and the disc brakes, and it's got good power and it's got a hitch. It does everything I need to do, but I don't like driving it in the summertime because it doesn't have air conditioning and it's not that cool these convertibles are way cooler to drive in the summer and we haven't switched out cars yet. Still basking. It was 90 degrees last weekend and of course it's about 45 degrees out right now. But there's something I want to show you here on the Figaro. I installed a gauge set. I couldn't stand driving this car not knowing what the oil pressure was. If you recall, the whole reason I got this car was that it had no oil pressure. And I took the engine apart, or took the oil pump apart, tried a few things. I don't know which part of fixing the oil pump fixed it, whether shimming the spring fixed it, the uh, relief spring. I took out a gasket in the main body of the pump, which I didn't think should have been there. And uh, a couple other little things. Cleaned out the pan, cleaned out the pickup tube. Anyhow, I had a hard time finding gauges that would match. These are really cool old gauges, uh, old timey gauges you might say, uh, here in the Figaro with uh, black needles and a white face. The closest I could come to that was chrome bezels, uh, red needles and a white face, black numbers. So this is a Equus oil pressure gauge, it's mechanical, and this is a Bosch uh, turbo gauge or boost pressure gauge. It's also mechanical, so if you look underneath here, see the tubes. This one is the oil pressure and this one is the boost pressure and they're totally mechanical. And I put them there just so that they're, you can see them when you're driving. Most of the time your eyes are up here but you can glance down and you can see them. It doesn't affect the passenger area. I didn't want to put them under the glove box. I didn't think the lines were long enough. I didn't think there'd be enough room here. I need my, when I get into the car, I kind of slide my leg across like that and I kind of need this room. And there's just a lot of things going on. The convertible top switch is down here. The heat comes out down there. So that's the best place to put the gauge. So we also have an oil pressure idiot light right here as well as the gauge. And I'm gonna start this thing up cold. Uh, it's been sitting all night. It's approximately 45 degrees outside. I can almost see my breath. And I bet you this thing is going to peg. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, because I haven't had a gauge uh, starting it up cold. I drove it home last night and it went up to about 75, but it, the engine was pre-warmed. So my goal is to have this thing not peg 100 PSI cold and also give me 20 PSI warm idle. That's what I'm trying for. And I may have over did the oil pump, uh, created a problem for myself, too much oil pressure, or if the spring decides to break or retract, because I did stretch it, it may be too little. So let's put the key in, we'll find out. So let's see, I'll hold the key up so we can get a good, good look at the oil pressure gauge here. 
Um, so you'll notice, whoops, that the light is on for the oil. That is a five PSI light. In other words, it goes off or comes on at five PSI, five or six. So let's start it up. Okay, it's uh, 1100 degrees there. I'm sorry, 11, well, it's about 1000 RPM. And we've got thick oil. Oh my goodness. That's right, I've been using 2050 oil. Let's see where this ends up. Oh, it's getting high. Eighty, it's about eighty-five, I think, right now. So the car is idling at eleven hundred RPM, cold, and eighty-five. It's pretty thick. If I rev it up, I think it'll take a hundred. Let's see if we get my boot in here. So I'm holding at about two thousand, and it's ninety psi. Hasn't blown any seals yet, but that could blow a seal. It looks like it's gone down, so that's as it warms up. Boy, it's thick and cold. I'll have to remember to warm this car up a little bit. Okay, that was the test I wanted to do. Now, to get it hot, i got to drive it about a half hour. I'm not going to do that right now. 80 PSI cold. I guess that's not too bad. Definitely more than I thought it would be. So it's slowly going down to 70 as the oil warms up. It's pretty good. And as the car warms up, the RPMs come down. Uh, I should say if I turn the headlights on, let's see. That brings the RPMs down. And that should bring the oil pressure down. Nope. Put it in gear. Let's here. It's in drive. Headlights on. Still about 80. Well, that's interesting. Turn the lights on. So we got a good solid 80 psi cold. I don't think that'll hurt anything. I hope not. We'll just have to warm it up. You can see the pressure's going down. Just sitting here. So we have enough oil pressure. So that fixed that problem. Also got the new uh, Oregon license plates that uh, are um, one-time registration, which is really great. It's for antique cars. Saves a lot of money. Don't have the biannual registration. So that's going to wrap up the cars. I've got something else I want to show you. That's really cool. You may or may not like this. So all these cars in the driveway here, I just opened my gate, are gas-powered cars. But... Everyone's talking about electric cars and the future is electric and I believe it. It's coming really fast. I did something kind of sneaker doodle. Uh, we have central AC in our house. And what I did, uh, so when I wired it, I put the AC in. Uh, I put in an eight um, gauge wire from the fuse panel to the condenser evaporator, whatever you call this unit on the outside of the house. And where it comes in, um, it's eight gauge wire. I then wired in this switch. And if you look at the switch here, uh, EV up, AC down. So I put in a double pull, double throw, 30 amp switch. So that right now the AC is on in the house. If I flip the switch to there, it's off. And if I switch, switch it here, the power then goes to this flexible conduit over here. And we have a 50 amp waterproof outlet to charge our electric car so we can park our electric car right here in the driveway at night backed up and charge i also have one in the garage two in the garage that are 60 amp so we're preparing for the electric future and i think that's the neatest thing ever i didn't know how i was going to run a whole new circuit from our fuse panel because our fuse panel is full and even though this is 30 amp and not 50 amp I think it'll charge just fine. It's still 220, 30 amp, and it's a strong 30 amp. So on Teslas, they show, they show you what the charging amperage max you can get. And I'm hoping I can get, you know, 30 amps out of it solid, which 
will give us a lot of uh, quick charging ability. So there you go. That is the latest from the project vault here at the two stroke turbo channel. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff that I never say because you don't know what you're gonna see when you subscribe to me, <laughs> but it's gonna be good. You gotta believe me. All right, if you're still hanging around, good for you. <laughs> Most people probably have clicked off the video by now. I wanted to say a couple more things about my new switched AC to EV outlet plug on my fence outside on my driveway here. One is I don't own an electric car, but my family does. And when they come to visit, I want to be very hospitable and open and, uh, sh you know, be a good host. And while they're having Thanksgiving dinner or coming over for the weekend, they can charge their electric car. My mom specifically has a brand new Tesla, and I'm very excited for her to come over and plug in and tell me how many amps this draws. That's the one thing I want to say. The other is we don't ever use the AC at night, ever. This is Portland, Oregon and we don't have humidity, and it's usually at the very most 65 degrees on the hottest summer night. So we only use the AC maybe five times, six times during the summer, during the day. So I have the ability to switch the AC off and turn the EV charging on. Now, everyone may not have that ability. If you live in Georgia or in a humid state um, where it's really hot, Florida, let's say, or anywhere in the south, you probably have to run your AC at night, and this may not work for you. <clears throat> but here in the Pacific Northwest, above the uh, 45 degree lateral, we don't need AC at night. So this works out really well. Just flip the switch, charge your car at night, and our electric, what is it? We, char we are charged seven cents a kilowatt hour since we're all on hydroelectric power here. We have very cheap electricity. We have no coal and more and more solar and uh, wind power in our mix. So if you're concerned that we're charging our cars with coal, we are not. It's mostly from Bonneville Dam, which is a huge dam on the Columbia River. And we get, I think, 99% of our power from there. I think we do have a backup natural gas plant, but uh, it's not used much. So there you go. Someday when we get solar panels on our house, someday, we'll be able to charge our car directly from the sun. Um, that's when everybody's driving electric cars. So that's where I wanted to end it. I wanted to say I don't elect own an electric car yet. I may have something on order, but we'll, that'll save that for a, another video. And we do have the capability. So if you come over and visit, you can ch plug in your electric car. And Stella wants to say goodbye. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Look at you, you silly dog. All right, thanks for watching. That's all I wanted to say.